In 2021, we partnered with Arthrex, a global medical manufacturing company, to develop an image detection service that would be used for labeling their medical devices found at a foot. We were tasked with developing this tool within AWS's recognition software, which is Amazon's machine learning training environment for video and image labeling. And our job as a team was to analyze the cost efficiency of training these images within recognition and bring our findings back to Arthrex. In addition, while we researched and developed these training sets, we set out to develop an application program interface and complementary graphical user interface to utilize these models for applicable use. We'll be going into a deep dive of how we've developed this suite of tools and the processes involved in interconnecting them. One of the most critical parts of developing a machine learning model is training it. However, you may be wondering, what is training? In the context of our project, training is the process of giving a machine learning program a collection of images with labels and bounding boxes to learn from. These labels tell the program what the subject of the image is, while the bounding boxes are rectangular boxes that tell the program where the subject is located within the image. After training, we test how effective that training was by using the training data to automatically label and bound other images. If we found the results of this testing unsatisfactory, we could even go back and add more images to the training or testing sets. This entire process of training, testing, and improving a machine learning program is how we develop a model. For example, let's say we wanted to teach recognition how to find a syringe within a photo. We would first have to manually draw bounding boxes across each and every syringe in our training set. This essentially teaches recognition what a syringe is and how one looks. We would then have to run recognition on several photos of syringes from our test set to see if it can accurately identify them. However, let's say that this model could only accurately identify a syringe 50% of the time. In this case, we could add more images of syringes to our training set, giving the program a clearer idea of what a syringe is. This would give us a strong basis for a model of syringes. Ultimately, though effective, the fatal flaw with this technique is that it requires hundreds of different looking assets to learn from. As you can imagine, this requires us to have thousands of official image assets from Arthrex, something we did not have access to at the beginning of the project. How did we solve this? As stated, we didn't have access to Arthrex's collection of assets due to confidentiality reasons, but we needed a way to move forward with developing a training environment in the meantime. We proceeded with developing a web scraping software to scrape the public images off their site. After days of scraping the site, this gave us thousands of image samples to work with to help us build an example training environment. This essentially allowed us to work on the project before being given the official assets. While we were in this experimental stage of development, we noticed that most of their assets were at similar angles and backgrounds throughout. Most commercial type image assets do have some form of pattern and consistency, but this is not good for training for image recognition. To have a trained model have a higher accuracy in labeling what an image is, it needs to have a variety of that type of object. For instance, if you wanted to develop a model that recognized what an automobile was, but you never fed it SUV assets, the likeliness of it labeling that SUV as an automobile diminishes. To combat this, I developed a procedural 3D environment for a few third-party models similar to the assets we were training. This allowed us to teach recognition and understanding for diverseness. Instead of all the images having, say, a white background with the object perfectly in focus, we were able to give it images that had motion blur, different angles, varying levels of brightness, and even a change in the color of the asset itself. Now, recognition can train with a variety of differentiating assets, all of the same label. But it didn't take long for us to realize that we couldn't work on these labeling images together. You see, the recognition console only allows labeling for a single user to bound images through their account and their account alone. There's no way to manage everyone's bounding work. On top of that, if you wanted to use the labeled images in another model, we would have to relabel them through recognition, in essence restarting the process. If we didn't find a fix for this bottleneck, it would slow down the project's progression tremendously. That was when we discovered SageMaker, an Amazon web service that allowed us to work on labeling simultaneously. The importance of using SageMaker is that we are able to save our labeled datasets in the form of manifest JSON files. These manifest files contain metadata about the bounded objects in the images which enable the reuse of labeled datasets. Once this service was set up, we were able to create labeling jobs which allowed for the collaboration and creation of those manifest files. However, 
Some issues we still had at this point were creating data sets from the repository of assets, as well as combining those manifests quickly and without duplicates. When creating a data set, first you need to decide which images will be used to represent the item the model will be trained on. As Jaden mentioned, these images need to be as variable as possible. Using the syringe example, you cannot have all of your images showing the syringes with the same lighting, background, and angle. This will create what is called overfitting and will not allow the model to recognize new syringes varying from what was used to train it. Let's say you have a folder holding 600 images of syringes, and you only need to use 200 to train your model. What do you do? You could select 200 from the beginning or end, but the folders are sorted. This sorting will lead towards a more overfit model. Another option would be to manually grab 200 images one by one from different areas in the folder, but this is where the sporadic K-number relocation tool, or SKIRT, comes into play. What this tool does is selects the folder containing the images to be used in the dataset and moves a selected amount to a new folder. This new folder will be uploaded for use in SageMaker. After the photos are uploaded into SageMaker, the labeling jobs are made, labeled by the team, then a manifest file is created. From there, the manifests need to be put into recognition to train the machine learning model. Once you have a collection of manifests, you could copy the data from inside all those files and paste it into a singular file, then this file would be uploaded into recognition, but there are a couple potential issues that could arise. One being that combining hundreds of manifest files could take a long time. Another being that if there is an image that appears multiple times somewhere within that collection of manifest files, there is no reasonable way to check for that duplication. This again can lead to an overfit model if the same image is being used multiple times in the training. Our solution to this is the Manifest Unification Tool, or MUT. With this tool, you select the downloaded manifest files that are needed in the combined dataset, name the file, and select the location. The tool does the rest. To complete the training, this compiled manifest is fed into recognition and the resulting model is ready to be used. Upon the advent of the SKIRT and MUT tools, we were enabled to create an interface that showcased the models and offered users an avenue to easily have their images processed. The tool is a simple graphical user interface, or GUI for short, that allows users to upload an image that is then delivered to the pre-trained recognition model via our devised API calls. Essentially, what's occurring is, the image is uploaded by the user, converted into a byte array, and then fed into the model for processing. Once processed, the GUI updates to display the user's image along with the labels, bounding boxes, and confidence ratings the model produced. Furthermore, it only details labels which it has deemed over a predetermined confidence, in this model's case, 80%. It accomplishes all this by employing traditional OOP techniques to compartmentalize the GUI into discrete components and API authentication tokens to ensure the model is only being implemented by those deemed authorized to use it. In a more technical capacity, the interface is generated and made operable by employing Python and its various functionalities to fulfill tasks such as image to binary conversions, file uploads, API requests, JSON processing, and rendering various cosmetic elements. Though there were several obstacles along the way, just like any project, we were able to overcome them through dedication and communication. We each had a major role in our own way, but all of us made sure to help one another through critique and support. We'd like to thank Florida Gulf Coast University and Arthrex for helping us work together on developing a tool that can determine and label medical devices. Thank you.